This presentation will be given in English. A translation is available separately online. If you're desperate, you can open it now and see if you can follow along. I make no promises for the quality of the translation, except Google does seem to do a decent job, according to Dr. Gomez. This presentation will be in English. Ladies and gentlemen, and those who identify otherwise, thank you for your presence at this presentation on teamwork and collaboration online. In today's presentation, we will give models for teamwork and collaboration for those forming, participating in, and leading teams. Participants will be able to diagnose where their teams are working well or need work. The first part will be basics and pro tips. The second part will be further demonstrations of team meetings and team check-ins. Definitions. A team is two or more people working on a common objective. For example, look at the person sitting next to you right now. And imagine I have just assigned the two of you to work together to learn something new today before the end of this presentation. You are a team of two. Team complexity is the number of possible person-to-person -person interactions within a team. For you, Kurt, for your two-person team, there's only one possible person-to-person -person interaction. Your team complexity is one. The more interactions that are possible, the more complex the team. For example, look at the person sitting on the other side of you and imagine that I just added them to your team. For your three-person team, there are now three ways to interact. Your team complexity is three. Teams can be one-time or recurring. For example, when this presentation is over, your three-person team project is over as well. That is a one-time team. On the other hand, even when this presentation is over, the faculty team will be sponsoring several more shared class presentations. That is a recurring team. Teams that you sign up for are voluntary. Teams that you are assigned to are involuntary. For example, your United Nations Goals for a Sustainable World Project is involuntary. The models that we will present apply to all of these types of teams. Next slide. Team operations model. From an analytical point of view, a team may be considered as a box with arrows. The arrow on the left represents the inputs of the team, such as your team members and their skills and time. The arrow on the right represents the outputs of the team, such as your project presentations and displays. The arrow on the top represents the controls on the team, such as assignments and constraints. In this course, 
your controls include the team briefing and project briefing. The arrow on the bottom represents the supports of the team, such as the things that help get the job done. In this course, your supports are the shared classes and the faculty team. My job here today with this presentation is to empower you to be a support arrow yourself. No matter what team you're on or what role you play on that team. Now and in your future. Effective teams have effective members. Each of you bring an individual investment to the team box based on what you already know how to do and whether you're willing to do it. Together, these make up your net contribution to the team. Commitment is your level of dedication to the team objective. It is what you do. Competence is your level of proficiency in the role you play to achieve the team objective. It is what you know. This is a simple model and it goes like this. High competence times high commitment equal high effectiveness. Low competence times low commitment equal low effectiveness. If either is medium, the effectiveness is medium. If either is zero, the effectiveness is zero. Most of the time, individuals achieve medium effectiveness due to constraints on their knowledge and time. However, anything above zero is a win. Pro tip, professional tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what do you know how to do? And are you willing to do it? Effective teams share roles. Your team brings a group investment to project success based on how well your members cover as many as nine team roles. These include leading the team, idea generating, investigating parallel efforts, detailed specialist knowledge, steadfast implementing, filling in the gaps, ruthlessly tracking progress versus goal, fine detailing, and coordinating the team. This is a simple model, and it goes like this. High coverage equals high success. Medium coverage equals medium success. Low coverage equals low success. Most of the time, groups achieve medium success due to one or more team role skills not being covered by a team member going in. However, anything above zero is a win. Professional tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what roles don't you know how to do yet? 
And are you willing to learn them? Effective teams use best practices. Best practices address how you and your group communicate. Brainstorming is an opening exercise where new ideas are generated. Deciding is a narrowing exercise where choices are made and action begins. Briefing is a narrowing exercise where agendas and ground rules are decided before an event begins. Debriefing is an opening exercise where members reflect on what happened at an event after it is over. This is a simple model and it goes like this. Either you talk to make things more open and expand the options, or you talk to make things more closed and narrow the options. The ability to expand options and the ability to narrow options are both needed. Throughout your project, your team will cycle back and forth between opening and closing communication. Both are essential to productive team operation. Professional tip. The question is, in the current conversation, are you in an opening or a closing mode, and is it time to switch? Effective teams develop in stages. Stages address how you and your team evolve through time. Warming is where you learn each other's names and how to get in touch with each other. Storming is where you argue with each other about how to do stuff. Norming, making norms, is where you get used to each other and agree on a plan and detailed action steps. Performing is where you crank out the results, make it happen. Throughout a project, your team will cycle back and forth between these stages. For example, adapting to changes in skills, circumstances, team members. You will be adapting, improvising, and overcoming up to and even during your team presentation. Professional tip. The question is, for changes that arise, is it okay to proceed per plan, or is it time to do something different? Effective teams evolve. Right now, you are in a team project called Virtual World International Team Spring 2023. Even when this is over, you will certainly be in some other team project. In fact, you already are in other team projects, even now, with your family, your friends, and other activities, and work. Each time you participate in a team project, you have the opportunity to experience a growth cycle. You are listening to what is being asked. 
choosing how to participate, acting on your choices, advancing based on your results, and extending your personal abilities to make things happen. Professional tip. The question is, what are you willing to learn how to do next?